The next part of the spec that we're going to look at is from LO3. Um, and we're going to look at basically file management um, and why that's important. You can see that it forms a small part of LO3. It says here at this bullet point, um, suitable name and conversions, e.g. version control and organisational requirements. So the first part of um, file management is about naming files. And you've probably had your teacher say to you constantly over the years um, that saving files with appropriate names is really, really important um, because it'll help you in the future with your project. Now, it's just basics that you really need to know at all times. Um, and it'll serve you in good stead for the rest of your life when you're working um, on computers in the future. But you also need to remember that there are marks available for this in every unit. Um, not many marks, but over the course of each unit, if you got two or three for getting that right, you're going to add a significant amount in the end when you add up all of your scores. So file management in this sense mm -hmm. is just a very good lesson for you for the future. So one of the things that we can look at are files that are downloaded from media sources. So I'm talking about things like um, digital cameras, video cameras, um, microphones, those kinds of things. Um, they have what we call generic file names. So the device itself organizes it. And you can see here an example of that. These are um, image files that have been stored on a memory card and then the memory card's put into the computer to transfer. But it also applies to when you download something off the internet, you quite often have ridiculous file names, um, lots of letters or numbers or symbols that mean nothing to you or to anybody else. And the question is, when you take this forward, how do you know what these files are? Can you easily find the right file if you need to? Would someone else be able to use your files to create a digital media product? Sometimes in the digital media industry, it can be somebody's job to source the assets, but then it's somebody else's job entirely to put together the final product. So for example, um, you might have a cameraman who is filming parts of the scenes, somebody else who is um, out there getting the voiceover part together and then it's somebody else's job to merge all of those things together to create your final product. You need to rename the files to make them relevant to the content and useful to other people. So here's a good example. Um, again, we're using image file formats, um, but you can see that the first one's actors and then cast, then costumes and so on. It's very clear what those ones are. And it might be that you have um, three pictures of the location from different angles. So you might say location number one or location two. Organising files simply allows projects to run more smoothly. Um, in the digital media um, sort of industry, like I've said, you're not having the same people run it. You might be working to a really, really tight deadline. And this prevents mistakes. It makes things more accurate. We're going to look at version control now. Um, and as you'll have gathered from all the other units, when you're in the digital media sector, you get feedback constantly from the client, but also from your target audience. By the end of a project, you could have had several different versions of it. And that'll sometimes depend on your time frame, but also your success. Improvements need to be made at all times to make the client happy. After all, they're the ones who are paying you. So they're the ones who get to decide what goes in something at the end. So here's an example of really bad file management. So you can see here, these are audio files. The first one's first song. Another song, different song, new song. Well, how do we know which one of those was the first version and which one was the last version? It might be that the client gives you feedback after um, after the first version. 
and the target audience gives you feedback as well. The second version, you've incorporated that feedback. But then when you get to the second one, they say, actually, you know what? I liked something from version one. So you need to be able to track those changes because you might need to reverse them. An example of good file management then is this. So you've got here song underscore V, which stands for version underscore zero one. And the reason we have the zero is because you could end up with 11, 12, 13, 14. That is more than possible. Your second one then is song underscore V underscore zero two. So that would be version two. And then what you also get is when they're saved in a folder, because they've got the same file name, they'll go one underneath the other next to each other. So you're not hunting around for the different versions. Organisation is really important. So both name and conventions and version control can be applied to files and to folders. And when working for a client, you need to be able to present your work in a professional way. Again, you might start the project, but for whatever reason, you might not be the one finishing it. Say you move on to a new project or even to a new company. The person that's taken over from you, they need to be able to understand your work and track your trail of various different things. Organising files um, shows, as I said before, the development of your work. And that can in itself be really, really important because you need to be able to show what you've done over time. The very first paper for Creative Eye Media from January 2014 had a question about this. It says that the pre-production documents will be stored on a computer system. The content and ideas will be updated in response to feedback from the band. If you remember this um, paper was about Winged Breath and their um, documentary film. So question number one, um, or part one, is identify a suitable method of organising and tracking the updated files. If you look here, um, the question says, oh, the answer, sorry, the mark scheme says, you've got four options for this. Um, it's not an EG list, so these are the only one that they'll, or ones that they'll accept. So they said versions, dated folders, dated versions, or track changes. Track changes is um, in an office project where you could um, add it on that it tracks changes so it underlines things and keeps your deleted um, comments to the right hand side so you can see what's there. This is a document produced by the exam board um, which talks about um, the combined feedback so it's got the question possible marks and then some of the guidance so you can see here that it says um, that for part one of question three that it is all about version control that's what they're looking for in this particular answer so part two of question three says explain why this is a suitable method of organizing and tracking the updated files so this here is out of two marks um, so you would be able, expected to write a slightly more lengthy response so you can see here, um, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the guidance. So it says it must relate to three part one. Um, and it basically says if you don't get three part one right, even if you got two right, you won't get any marks at all. So it's vital that you're able to identify a method and then explain what that method is. So for example, the um, responses given is if you'd answered versions for the first part, say name and files, version one, version two, that's an example of how you would name those files. It'll stop confusion with your older version. So basically it's saying, what's the method? How would you do it? And then expand upon it. Um, so again, for the data folders, if you draw dated folders, you'd be writing using dated folders keeps earlier versions together. One mark. This means that the improved versions can be identified. So with these two questions, um, examiners 
comment said that the questions were there to test your work and knowledge of work and practices um, and how people organise themselves basically in a digital media context. This was generally poorly answered with very few learners gaining full marks across parts one and two. To gain full marks, learners needed to identify the use of dated files or folders, which would enable easy access to updated work or go back to earlier versions. So what they're looking for is context here. This is a vocational paper, so you're always relating it back to how you would actually do something. And that's what it's testing here, that you know how something would work in in an employment situation. So while it's a small part of the spec, it's also a part of the spec that people aren't getting right, they don't have the knowledge of.